All right, what's going on, guys? It is your boy Tiki Dungeon. You're back again here on PlayStation Source, and of course, here we are continuing. If you did not read the title or see the thumbnail, we are of course here doing Road to Dreams Episode Two. Uh, you know, the weekly Road to series again. If you guys are not well aware, has expanded beyond Last of Us Part Two and is going to you know any and every uh, big PlayStation exclusive that I feel like is deemed worthy of the Road to Tree. Man, I feel like Dreams overall is a game that is worthy of that treatment. And so episode one mainly covered the whole historical standpoint of dreams where it started from and it's pretty rough eight year, you know, going on nine years development cycle and uh, stuff like that. And so that was up last week. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And now here we are talking about dreams and uh i you know i gave the title for uh episode one like i i gave it i think the dream so far right and then and then i would like to call this episode daydreaming of the future of course we are talking about the future of dreams where sony sees it and how even right now before the even game is released i feel like i feel like media molecule is doing a great job at overall kind of bolstering the future and nurturing its creators on dreams and just giving it a pretty good start in terms of uh you know the longevity and the legs if you will of this game dreams here by media molecule coming of course next month on february 14th 2020 and so if you guys you know have not been aware i haven't introduced anyone this is going to be a solo episode i haven't really done a road two episode solo um and and i feel like you know if this goes on pretty well i feel like i might you know uh, do a road to part two even though i don't you know have anyone to fill in for a week and stuff like that so let me know if you guys are cool with the solo podcast type deal and uh of course being a podcast down below in the description you can follow our anchor link to listen to us on podcast services that of course being apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, uh spotify as well, google play podcast i think google play yeah google play uh spotify as well make sure you go, make sure they go check out those links down below in the description as well as of course leave a like on the video and subscribe to playstation source for everything and all things playstation so going on here let's you know i wanted to first bring up um a very interesting article that came out around tgs 2019 right and so this article actually i'm going to pull it up over here as well on my document uh that way you know i can better reference it overall i thought i had to open but oh well what was he i guess i didn't so there is a 10-year plan with dreams set of course by the main man himself he used to be uh the head of worldwide studios at playstation but now he has taken up a role i believe in curating indies within playstation i believe he's going to focus uh more on on the side of indies and uh, making sure they are welcomed and i believe supported on the playstation ecosystem and so he has taken up that now but before uh during tgs 2019 back in september when he was again still the boss of worldwide studios uh you know shuhei yoshida was during was was doing a interview with uh, playstation asia and uh they were talking a little bit about dreams and so he had some interesting interesting things to lay out during the interview and of course the link will be in the description if you want to watch the full thing it's honestly a really good watch it's only like 11 minutes long but it's a really good watch i really implore you all to watch it if you guys are curious about his thoughts on dreams and so uh interesting things to you know come out from the interview he called media molecules dreams one of his favorite projects ever at playstation and he also went on to highlight that sony has really high hopes for dreams in the future as well as explaining that sony not only has high hopes but uh they also have a long-term plan for the game as well and so you know of course you know one could say that he was the head of worldwide studios so even if he had like any reservations about dreams and i feel like at some point there had to have been some reservations and you know just just take into account how long dreams has been cooking in the oven and like how long dreams has been in in uh actual development you know it's been a very very long time like we like we all went over in the first episode i won't go over how long that was but overall it was a multi-year development cycle that we are about to end here in february so uh i mean just to take into context just to really put it put it into perspective um uh dreams dreams assets and like the and the beginnings of dreams started 
as showing off the PS4 hardware in the form of tech demos. So that's how far back it goes. Like the the PS4 has been, you know, developed, launched this whole time. We, had, we got so many other exclusives and Dreams is only coming out in its last year uh, of being the main PlayStation console on the market. And so it is... Uh, it's been a long time, right? And so I feel like, you know, Yoshida, and, and I'm sure maybe, you know, some people at Sony, I'm sure they weren't always this this hopeful and like, you know, had this long-term plan for dreams. And I feel like maybe that's iterated in the last few years, but nonetheless, now they do. And maybe, you know, that's all just, you know, uh, you know, just, just saying what he has to say and then, and he's not gonna, uh, you know, tear down or, you know, express any concerns with an upcoming release, uh, you know, to kind of deter the overall hype for the game. That could be 100% true and could very well be happening. But uh, to a degree, I trust Yoshida when he says this because, like, he he definitely likes those smaller games. Like, like he's fan, like he's a fan of Patapon and stuff like that. And like he, you know, definitely likes those like weird, quirky games that Dreams um, happens to be one of them. And so he has a direct quote here. He says, we have a 10 year vision for dreams to keep growing with the community. And so this is where, you know, we, we kind of get into uh, the more meat of the actual episode is that how how they are really focusing on the community. And so to me, I feel like it makes sense that, you know, he is definitely having this focus uh, on the community because you want to grow a hardcore fan base around the community, around the game, that one of its big pillars is user generated content. Like you definitely want a way to keep people that are creating in this, you know, game that is heavily focused on user generated content and, uh, you know, is of course about making levels and stuff like that and sharing them and stuff like that. Uh, you like definitely want to bolster that. And I feel like, you know, with the likes of what Mini Molecule has done in the past in terms of like Little Big Planet, um, I feel like, you know, with them uh, working with PlayStation, working with PlayStation to release, uh, you know, some of those, uh, oh my God, what are they called? Sackboy skins. Uh, I know there were like different costumes that you can put on Sackboy um, so that he could wear in different levels and you know I'm sure they released different assets I'm not 100% familiar with how they updated uh, you know Little Big Planet uh, post launch but I know they did you know what I'm saying and so they are definitely used to you know having some sort of plan and some sort of roadmap uh, to actually be able to to bring new things to the game and bolster uh, different things and stuff like that. So overall, I feel like, you know, them doubling down on that again is a very good way to do it. And also, they are doing a good job at this, of course, with things like the MP Awards and uh, cross marketing, which again, we will talk about later on in the podcast. But he also, you know, begins to detail also that uh, having Dreams Early Access, which honestly, Dreams Early Access in itself, the fact that it even existed was very on the PlayStation. Like you, if you all don't know, uh, you know, PlayStation and Sony are definitely uh, not ones to let, you know, games on. I mean, like they 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 definitely don't like having early access games on PSN. I know that. Right. And and, uh, you know, it's been very, very well documented that, uh, you know, unless you're someone big like of course Fortnite is technically still in early access uh, and that gets on it and there's been a few other exceptions but you know they made a big exception a really really big change with dreams by allowing early access to happen where uh, uh, you know they also say that you know you know well not they Yoshida said that uh, it was this first step in the journey of dreams that he calls it like you know this like early access you know dreams version was a first step in that and and, and the reasons why he lays out, uh, you know, are definitely also have been heard by Media Molecule, which is really nice, I feel, so that it shows that they are definitely in the same in the same kind of lane with Dreams. And they kind of have a similar type of, you know, way of talking about Dreams and how they view Dreams. And it seems like they're both on the same page, which is great to hear, you know, for a game like this and for how they're talking about this game. And so uh, he goes on to explain that, you know, having early access in Dreams, while revolutionary in terms of PlayStation, also uh, was, of course, brought out to allow creators to get a grip on the new tool sets in Dreams, begin collaborations to make neat things in Dreams, and most importantly, uh, to provide feedback to the developers at Media Molecule. And so I feel like overall the early access 
Um, you know, uh, Dream's version definitely did what it sought out to do from the perspective of Yoshida and Media Molecule. I feel like they both, uh, you know, definitely, you know, made a good move in terms of bringing early access to the public and by letting the most hardcore of hardcore get their hands on the tools first and be able to, you know, n you know, you could have a million trailers for Dreams, right? But I feel like, you know, like we said before, the type of games Dreams is it's hard to convey the possibility of what you can do in dreams in a low two minute trailer, right? Like it's cool to show off, you know, the main story as they've done before and stuff like that in in dreams, in trailers, in uh, actual like, you know, footage and trailers at different events and stuff like that. But to really get a grip of, you know, the overall scope of the game, I feel like players have to really get their hand on it. You know, you can't really advertise a creative game that relies on user generated content, you know, for one of its pillars. Again, not it's not like the whole game is only UGC. You know, they do have a separate story that, you know, Media Molecule developed as well in house. Um, but, you know, it's 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 definitely worth a lot to give the diehard fans hands on the tools to be able to you know give feedback to back to media molecule and for them to overall just build a nice little fan you know a fan community if you will around dreams so i feel like they did a great job at bringing early accesses early access to the platform and i do like how uh yoshida also agreed with that notion as well um and so he also made um other remarks as well but of course listen to the full uh interview down below in the description and so i feel like you know also with how serious they were talking about early access about early access excuse me well i'm just, i'm just, Jeez, I'm having a hard time talking today, I swear. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, for them having early access as well, it, like, really does tell me that they mean it when they said that, like, they have a 10-year plan with Dreams. I don't know if it'll ever come to fruition, you know, and we've had the likes of Bungie even say that, oh, yeah, like, we have a, you know, 10-year plan for Destiny and stuff like that. And, you know, they were saying that, I believe, even, even before, before Destiny came out, right? So we've had studios, you know, say that uh, to be able to instill a bit of confidence in those that are are looking forward to a game coming up but i feel like them taking that early access step double down on that right and especially with we've been hearing now that ps4 games will will work with ps5 um i feel like you know they are definitely looking at dreams in a long term in a long term way as opposed to just um your your average game that that you know makes the rounds when it first comes out a lot of people play it when it first comes out a lot of people like it and then over time it just kind of you know just dwindles out phases you know and just kind of just does its own thing and 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 that was it and it seems like they don't want to just have that type of thing with dreams it really does show that uh you know like especially when you talk when you're talking about you know who said these things which is Yoshida, like, like he's, he's a big deal at PlayStation, like, it's not like he's, you know, just some random PR person, or random, you know, talking head, like, it's Shuhei Yoshida, you know, he definitely has a lot of pull, and it definitely does show, uh, you know, with his comments right here, and I feel like what, what he said has a lot more weight coming from him, uh, and so I definitely feel like, you know, Dreams will be an integral part of PS5, uh, in a lot of different ways that I hope to see, but we will talk about again later on. But before, you know, we get into how Media Molecule is taking strides to nurture their Dreams community, I want to shed a little light on how they seem to be using Dreams as a way to promote other things as well under the Sony umbrella of, uh, different corporations and, and just different things that are coming out, out of Sony as, as a company. And so at the Game Awards 2019, uh, if you guys are watching it, you know, overall, I thought it was a pretty good show. Overall, I it wasn't my favorite Game Awards. I think my favorite Game Awards was definitely 2018. But overall, uh, you know, was a was a was a fine show. It was a it was a pretty good show. Right. And so there was a little promo that came on in between uh, the like ad breaks and stuff like that. And it was just started out as a promo for Jumanji The Next Level, the upcoming Sony movie, of course, with Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart. Um, I forgot her name but Nebula, uh, apologies, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, I really forgot her name, dang, Karen Gilligan, I think, or something like that, I, I, I don't know, y'all let me know down below, but also, of course, Jack Black is in the movie, uh, and it came out, I didn't see it, her was good, I saw the first Jumanji, that was pretty good, but nonetheless, 
Next Level was was coming out when they did this promo at Game Wars 2019. And to a big surprise to me and to a lot of other people, uh, they actually detailed that you could play a level in Dreams right now inspired by Jumanji The Next Level. And they had a little trailer where they showed the cast playing the game and and uh and they even had a part in the trailer where jack black recorded his voice straight like from the couch as he was playing and they put his voice into the game i believe they said that they were gonna put his voice as like an attack in the guitar i think i think calling back to um his old game oh that came out during like ps3 era i forgot what it was called but uh jack black actually started in a video game uh that he was like some like metal rock hero i forgot what that was called but i think it was a callback to that but you could see in the trailer that they recorded his voice right where they were right as they were on the couch playing the game and stuff like that and and yeah so they they put out this level uh, to kind of give a little promotion to Jumanji the next level and as soon as I saw it I was like man that is um, that's a great idea you know I don't know who I don't know what you know employee or what Sony employee or what intern or what PlayStation marketing person came up with that idea but that he should get a way like he should get a ways he should get a raise you know what I'm saying with an R not a W with an R like definitely because uh that is really really smart stuff and you know i feel like the the likeness of this happening in the future with other um you know movies and like other big things i feel like are is kind of probably not possible because you know the closest thing we've we've had to this happening uh in gaming is of course fortnite when they do their massive you know batman events and they do of course we had the star wars event most recently in december and of course the two times we've had an avengers type of thing in fortnite you know what i'm saying so i feel like fortnite is just so massive and is not tied to one console that that one is a little bit more easier i feel like to approach from a wider spectrum of different companies but i feel like within sony like you know if um you know obviously if like they don't want to uh, you know, you know, put some marketing behind in Fortnite and uh, and, you know, they still want a way to cross market their new movie or new etc. Whatever coming out. I feel like Dreams is a re really, really great way to promote both Dreams and the thing that they're trying to market themselves. Like, I feel like it's a very, very neat idea. I thought it was re re really clever as well. Um, and I hope it continues. And I think that, you know, it could be a really, really cool thing in the future to not only have Dreams you know, be for the public and and be this, of course, you know, game that you can create levels in and express your uh, creativity and stuff like that and make assets overall for other people in the game as well to enjoy and use in their levels. Um, I feel like having this really cool marketing promotion with Jumanji was really telling of that maybe, you know, this is where they also see you know dreams going in a way like maybe they they have this side of dreams as well like you know if they if they have an upcoming sony movie uh you know they make some sort of experience in dreams to kind of capitalize on that or maybe they do you know straight from fortnite and they start premiering trailers or premiering uh you know different clips within levels when in in dreams and stuff like that so i feel like uh you know it's a really really cool thing and i thought it was pretty neat let me know what you guys think in the comments below and i had an idea right when i was thinking about this i would like to you know share with you all if i may you know what i'm saying and uh hey if it gets taken cool because i would love to see this and i do have an artist in mind i would i would like to see this too so i'll, I'll probably at him in the tweet and, and uh call him out here on this clip so we'll see i don't know but Sony has, of course, a music label, right? Uh, I believe it's called Sony Music or, or or something like that. But I know Sony has a has a department within the grand spectrum of Sony that uh, they have, you know, a record label, right? Where we have seen uh, a little bit of cross marketing in this way, where they have said that they are going to start doing this. Uh, and the first example of this was, of course, with Death Stranding, where we got um, some select uh, tracks, you know, from a variety of different artists in the actual game of Death Stranding and one of the most prominent that I remember off the top of my head even though I know there's a ton of other music as well in Death Stranding it's very very good stuff um uh Khalid had had a feature I believe or a standalone song I think um that was featured in Death Stranding right so what I'm saying is why doesn't uh you know Sony you know Sony record label uh and Media Molecule team up 
and maybe the next time you know Khalid drops an album or another R drops an album, they create a Sayonara Wild Hearts esque type of experience for the upcoming album, right? So if you guys never played Sayonara Wild Hearts, it is essentially a visual game album, right? And I don't. Oh, no, wait, no, no, I know you can get the album on different streaming services, but, um, you know, it's kind of made and the album is overall made to be able to be played, uh, you know, on your switch or on your phone as well on, I know it's on the app store. I don't know if it's on Android, but, uh, it's a visual game album, you know what I'm saying? And you're playing through the tracks as you go along the game and stuff like that. So I feel like having some sort of experience like that. Uh, you know, with a new Sony artist, you know, on on Dreams, I think it'd be really, really cool as well. You know, like it doesn't have to be just them promoting movies or them promoting, uh, you know, something else, you know, or whatever. It could be literally anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, like as long as it complements it well and it makes sense, I think it could be cool. You know, I think it'd be cool to like have some sort of, um, you know, um, album coming out that has a concept and dreams are be able and dreams levels are are able to kind of make that concept be more visual uh for a lot of people and i think it could you know garner sales both ways like i think i just think that could be really cool and i think uh you know i really want to see the future of where this kind of cross uh you know marketing goes within dreams overall so i think hopefully we we see that because mm, khalid man my boy <laughs> yo yeah next album my boy Tap media molecule, man. I don't know, man. Maybe, you know, if you want some ideas, let me know. You know, give me access to the album first. I'll listen to it, you know. I'll I'll get in the call with Media Molecule, you know, we can we can make something happen, you know. If you need it, let me know. Khalid, I got you. You know what I'm saying? My DMs are open. But nonetheless, uh the next step here I wanted to talk about in terms of this whole thing about daydreaming with the future of dreams, um, is the upcoming Impy Awards. And so we have talked a little bit about this. I've even made a standalone video on the channel as well, uh, detailing the overall kind of details and stuff like that of the MP Awards, but I'll kind of go over them one more time in case none of you all were aware, because it is coming up pretty close. It is going down this Sunday, January 26th. Unfortunately, I We'll be at work all day because Sunday is my long work day. Uh, so unfortunately, I will not be able to watch this live. But um, I think next week we will probably go over the winning levels. And I'm trying to get some of these creators on the show. Hopefully, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, maybe. Hopefully, we will we will see how I can slide into these DMs. And uh, hopefully, I can uh, land one of the creators that are featured on the MP Awards Uh on road to dreams so definitely if you have any suggestions of people that you want to you you, you blah, blah, blah. wow okay pause let's let's try that sentence again if you want <laughs> if you have any suggestions on dreams creators that you all would like to see on road to dreams either next week or in, 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 in or in an upcoming episode let me know down below in the comments and i will reach out to them and uh you know i will do my best you know to get to get someone on the show that was featured at the MP Awards. But they detailed in a newsletter recently that uh, they will have, uh, you know, in the MP Awards, they will contain special guests, exciting in exciting industry judges, surprises, fancy costumes, and even a theme song too. And so, you know, it, it, this is definitely not really a surprise because I know Media Molecule loves to just do some of this out there stuff that a lot of dev teams and a lot of studios typically don't do like who the hell makes an award show for their game you know what i'm saying now of course you know why would the traditional game have an award show you know what i'm saying but it definitely does make sense uh to have to have a game about you about creation and about people making levels you know and about people making assets in the game and stuff like that um and with all this creativity in dreams to be able to have a platform to celebrate some of the good stuff on dreams that people have made you know and the closest thing i guess we have to this is you know with like esports in terms of like some of the players win awards you know but that's like a little bit different that's more of like a more of like a competitive thing and not so much well no i guess it is similar in a way i don't mean to like belittle uh you know esports players because i know they are incredible a lot of them are you know but from a more creative standpoint you know i really like this idea of like having a award show for creators on dreams i, I think it's a really neat thing i've thought 
I thought that it was neat from the beginning. I thought it was a great way to to overall nurture the community and highlight, you know, Dreams levels and their creators as well to be able, you know, to just to just celebrate what they're doing in Dreams. I think that's a really neat way, and and I hope it'll garner a lot of attention and a lot of eyes. I hope, you know, to see on, you know, when I'm at work on Sunday, I hope to see a bunch of clips from the actual award show and you know clips from the levels that won awards i think it'd be really, really cool to see uh but we will have to see you know of course on sunday and i feel like you know with that thing i just said about twitter it's a great way to also give new eyes to dreams and stuff like that so i want to go over some of the categories as well that they uh, will be showing off in the mp awards and the first ones i want to go over are the fan voted categories so these categories are going to be voted by you i believe it's i believe the polls are closed now i think they closed uh, about a week or two weeks ago i believe i think i remember reading but uh nonetheless these categories were voted on by fans that, that you'll be seeing the results of on sunday at the mp awards and so the first one here is hidden gem creator hidden gem dream community star best voice acting favorite streamer and most helpful dreamer and so those will be voted on by the fans but the categories that will be voted on i believe by the staff of media molecule goes as such best curator most improved dreamer best visuals best character the awe award or the awe award that's, that's okay gotcha <laughs> i see what they did there uh funniest creation best song best sculpture best animation best gameplay best narrative best sound design the wish i had thought of that award dream of the year and creator of the year can you imagine winning dream of the year <laughs> that sounds like such a cool cool award but nonetheless um you know these you know some of these people that have been you know uh uh in dreams making these levels and stuff like that that hopefully i'll have at least one or two of them on road to dreams as a show um you know, it is really neat to have this. Like, imagine being a creator on Dreams and you literally win an award, you know, and you and we talked about this on episode one. But like, imagine if, you know, some people are able to submit this in their portfolio and they put it on their resumes and they go to different game dev studios when they're looking to get a job and they, you know, edge out the competition of other people that are trying to get hired for that position because they actually have an award, you know, in dreams that was gifted, that was gifted to them by Media Molecule. Um, and and that looks, and I assume that would look great on the resume. Like, I, I can't imagine, you know, a, a, a staff member or like a manager or something like that at a game dev studio, uh, you know, looking at someone that wants to work at their game development studio and not just kind of be like, huh, like that's, that's neat. Like they won an award for their creations in dreams. Now, obviously, you know, the, the dreams tool set are unique to dreams, right? So they will, of course, you know, have to have some expertise in terms of like traditional means of game development as well of course but nonetheless like having having that award i feel like has to look good on your resume and stuff like that you know and i think it'd be really cool if you know we start to see some of these people that are at the mb awards actually get hired based off of their experience with dreams and stuff like that you know i mean i i can't wait to see that personally like i think that'd be really really cool you know what i'm saying um and and i have to also imagine that there's a lot of people as well that have always thought about game development like i feel like every gamer to a degree always thinks about like if they could make a game you know or if they could be a part of a game development. i mean for my project capstone uh in my last uh semester of college i actually developed the game you know i mean i wasn't the one coding it but i helped in terms of audio assets and in terms of like level design and in terms of like the premise of each level and uh i i was a part of making a game in my last you know bit of college i had just now and i think that was a really neat experience overall we were using game maker uh to make it as well and stuff like that and i actually learned a lot about you know not not only like you know cutting uh, certain things out of the project uh, because of time, but also due to the hardware limitations that we had to work with. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just learned a lot of valuable things about game development, and I feel like I'm not alone in that. Like I feel like a lot of people have always kind of you know thought about game development, but I never really dipped their toes in or never had the means to uh, dip their toes into game development. And I feel like Dreams 
it gives a perfect entry for those that are looking into that and i think it'd be a really cool story if one day you know in the future we had you know some 15 16 17 year old make some levels and dreams and be inspired to uh, go on and make uh you know more games and ends up being higher than maybe he's the next neil Druckmann or the next you know tim schaefer or, or you know etc david jaffe you know like one of these like big people in the industry kojima you know what i'm saying like maybe uh one of these you know new up-and-coming game devs could have been spawned off of dreams i think that could be a really neat thing and i think that this award show uh encouraging people to make their best and and you know now that they know this hopefully is an annual thing you know, when the full game comes out, maybe a lot of people buy it just to solely try and, you know, get some recognition off the award show. I think it could be a really, really, really neat thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if a lot of people agree with me. I just feel like it's a really cool thing. And uh, I'm excited to see to see the MP Awards. I'm really excited to, uh, you know, see what comes of that, right? And to move on here, you know, it's one of, like, the last two points that I have here for this episode of uh, Road to Dreams. If you're, if you're in this far with me, right this is the first solo podcast i'm ever doing you know what i'm saying i don't believe i've ever done a solo podcast before and honestly i kind of like it it's like it's like i'm just talking to you guys you know but definitely uh if you're with me here and you're enjoying it leave a like on the video comment below all the good stuff thank you i appreciate it but there have been a lot of talks this week specifically the week of this recording um about a lot of different games and specifically the most we know one of merit horizon zero dawn uh being put on to pc right it's it's a pretty hot topic i feel like i feel like it's a it's a definitely an interesting topic that a lot of people you know have a varying degrees of opinions on you know what i'm saying i won't i don't think i can concise my feelings on the topic in in like a 10 minute not even 10 minutes like i feel like it's a much more complex thing that requires like a whole separate show so you know at some point you'll probably hear my feet hear my full thoughts on the whole topic to me I don't think it's the end of the world if PS4 exclusives come to PC. I would be a little bit concerned if they're dropping day and date the same time as PC. I think that could be a little bit concerning. But, you know, a few years after the game's initial release of being on PlayStation hardware, it, you know, coming to uh, PC, I feel like isn't the worst thing in the world. And I feel like it'll only garner the new um, uh, uh, people that have been wanting to experience a PlayStation exclusive you know what i'm saying like i really doubt that you know someone that played god of war on on uh, ps4 right and sees that uh sony may be dropping horizon zero dawn 2 i mean i'm sorry horizon zero dawn on pc right i don't feel like they they are gonna have a thought process that i don't believe that they are gonna have a pro wow i can't talk today i don't believe that they are gonna have a thought process of all right now that i know that playstation will inevitably drop their exclusives on pc i'll wait for god of war 2 to come out on pc whenever that does you know what i'm saying like i don't feel like that's ever gonna happen you know and then i don't feel like someone has that thought process but nonetheless right if it is true that sony and playstation are looking and experimenting with dropping games from their first party natively to PC. Not talking about PS Now. PS Now, I don't care when you put games, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I don't care when you put games on PS Now and put it on PC cuz it's on PS Now. That that's that's totally uh you know a service that, you know, if you are on, if you are on PC, it is a paid service. You are still paying Sony to be able to uh pay these games. So none you know, to me, I don't care when games drop on PC on PS Now, but natively is a whole different story, right? So I feel like if they are going to do this, Dream should be one of these games, right? I feel like, uh, you know, even though the motion tools are a very unique thing to PSVR and the PS Move ones, I could maybe see them, you know, letting those motion tools be used on like, on like Oculus hardware and stuff like that. I don't know. That one seems a little bit too out there. You know, maybe um, they would still require you to buy PlayStation Move ones to be able to use those emotion tools on Dreams, but I feel like allowing Dreams to be sold on PC and and having, uh, you know, people use their keyboard and mouse to create levels, I think could be really, really cool um, and could really garner a lot more of not only, like, 
potentially better levels, you know, and they have a better ability to design different things in dreams and sculpt different things in dreams overall with their more precise ways of input, like the mouse and like the keyboard, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I feel like it would most importantly bring just a whole new pool of people that have ideas for levels and dreams like you know and just j just having the most people as you can that are interested in creating in dreams uh even if they don't have plays in their hardware i think is a pretty neat idea for this game alone that's why i feel a little bit more comfortable with allowing not like i'm gonna you know call up something and be like no don't let it like i'm the gatekeeper with you know like i'm the gatekeeper like uh definitely not saying that but i'm i can definitely see uh, you know, an angle to dreams coming to PC, you know, I think it could, you know, I think it'd be cool. And as I said before, I don't think that it would launch day and day. I don't think PlayStation games will ever launch day and day on PC. Um, but maybe somewhere that like maybe in, you know, 2022, 2023, you know, uh, they uh, drop dreams on PC, you know, uh, because I feel like they are going to have another like a uh, big bolstering of the game when PSVR 2 drops and the different things that that new hardware brings to the table in in tr in terms of dreams or like a PS5 Pro that comes out, you know, I'm sure they'll do something like that. Maybe hopefully they bring out improved move wands cuz it's wild to me that with the PSVR right now, you you have to use uh the PlayStation move wands that are nearly a decade old tech. It's very very odd to me, but nonetheless I could see James coming to PC, and I think it would be a good thing for the game overall, right? And, okay, my actual last point here in this uh, Road to... I almost said Road to Part 2. Road to Dreams Episode 2, right? Daydreaming of the future of Dreams. You know what I'm saying? Dreams should be packaged in PS5, right? Now, hear me out. Hear me out. I know that, um, you know, that'd be a move that I don't know... That Sony would do solely because of the long development cycle of Dreams, and maybe Media Molecule financially is good. Maybe they're cool. Maybe they've been making a profit this whole time. Maybe Early Access did a lot better than we all think it did. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially, I mean, I don't know. You know, because we do have that you know parameter of they initially had the early. I mean, they not even initially the whole time Early Access was supposed to be a limited uh, entry, but it never got limited. Like. Anyone could have gotten early access until the last second it was up on PS Store. So, you know, maybe early access didn't do that hot, but maybe it did well enough for them financially to be able to sustain the studio, right? And uh, and maybe they actually bundle in Dreams with PS5, or maybe Dreams is the first PS... Actually, I, I see that being... Hmm, how do I feel about that? No, I don't see Dreams being like a Resogun ask type of deal where no not it wasn't resogun was it yeah 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 no was it resogun yeah resogun was ps plus i think right I, I i believe it was i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it was so i don't see you know dreams filling in that first month of ps plus on ps5 um as one of the free games because the game would have dropped about seven months prior and you were asking 40 dollars for it you know i don't know that kind of kind of rubs me the wrong way, but definitely I feel like at some point Dreams will be free on PS Plus. But um, you know, I just think packaging it with PS5 could be a bold move. And imagine giving everyone that buys a PS5, right, a a a Wii Sports type of disc, you know, called Dreams, right, where they can not only have an endless amount of games and levels to experience in Dreams. Uh, you know, beyond the main story of Dreams that Media Malku developed, but putting that in the hands of every PS5 owner day one, right? And seeing how much Dreams blows up from that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I think that could be a move that could be interesting, you know? I don't know if they actually do it, and there really hasn't been any rumors that they are doing this. This is just, as far as I'm aware, a purely just idea that I've thought of over the past few weeks. I think that could be a bold move, you know? I don't know if they would do it I don't know if they would do it solely because of, of the long development cycle that Dreams has had. And I have to assume that, you know, they are banking on release date sales and stuff like that. And that $40 price tag for Dreams, you know what I'm saying? Um, even though, you know, I hope Dreams does really well, but I don't think it will. You know, I, I don't think it's like a game that everyone's going to, you know, wait on the PSN to buy or go out to get. You know, I feel like it's definitely going to be just one of those like... 
uh, you know, probably a you know definitely above like a uh, Concrete Genie or above a uh, what was that other game that came out? Um, medieval remake. You know, it'll be somewhere in that realm, but definitely I feel like a little bit more above it. You know, just because of Media Molecule's name and their pedigree with Little Big Planet. But I just think it could be interesting if 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 they say, hey guys, like with you know we we want to double down on dreams. We have a ten year plan with that. And and I feel like you know we want the PlayStation uh, you know customers to be able to come on that dream. What dang, look at that! Come on the dream with us on this ten year plan. You know what I'm saying? Um, but like, I think it'd be bold for them to say, all right, every every PlayStation customer that buys a PS5 is gonna get dreams packaged in with PS5, and you're gonna be able to make different dreams and experience different dreams all on day one on PlayStation 5. I think I think that's a I think that, that could be a bold move. I don't know if it actually happened. Let me know how you guys feel and your thoughts down below. Um, I don't know. I just think it could be interesting, and I think it could pay off. I just don't know if they will solely because the games had a eight year development cycle or nine year or nine year nine year development cycle, however long it's been. It's been a long time. But uh, I think that's all I got on my show notes. I mean, overall, I feel like, you know, just talking about the future of Dreams, the way Yoshida has talked about Dreams, you know, this is like my overall, like, thesis and my, like, overall point, right? So, you know, having Shuhei Yoshida speak very, very highly of Dreams, right? And, of course, maybe his job is supposed to, of course, highlight. And, you know, his his job is to promote a lot of big first-party games that are coming out, right? But the level that he did it at for a game like this and the way he was talking about a 10-year plan with this game, you know, I feel like uh, that coupled with this brand new, uh, like, initiative that was started in Death Stranding uh, to have Sony Music um, and, and, like, and like have a little bit more of cross promotion in media stuff from Sony, right? And to and to come up to the Game Awards where we first see that little bit with Dreams, where now we're getting a Jumanji the next level that was featured as a as a Dream level in Dreams that early access play at wow <laughs> that early access Dreams players can play uh, along with of course the Impy Awards highlighting. Uh, you know, creators around the world that have made levels in Dreams and highlighting the best dreams that they have experienced, as well as the fans have experienced on Dreams via the Impy Awards and bolstering that. I think we have a pretty interesting future for Dreams. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, we haven't seen the full context of the future of Dreams, but I feel like we are getting little crumbles here and there that are very telling of where they're going with the direction of Dreams. And I feel like they want to have Dreams. I believe transcend, you know, just a regular game that has its release and fizzles out like we talked about before, but I feel like they want to make dreams a sort of platform where they can use it to inspire those that are interested in game development to have a more streamlined way to be able to make creations and be able to share creations amongst people that are playing dreams and bolster them of course with the MP awards and be able to cross promote different things via dreams in terms of this level that, that they made with the next Jumanji and going forward with that and i mean hey you know sony movies do include you know the venom stuff the upcoming uh oh my god what is that wow i, I forget the oh this is gonna kill me oh this is gonna kill me it's not manifesto Morbius. Oh my god, I almost forgot. I would have been, I would have been so mad if I ended it, ended the recording and remember Morbius as I was editing. I would have been so mad. But, you know, Morbius and now with uh, Spider-Man also kind of bleaching into the Morbius Venom universe, those are included in Sony movies. So maybe we have some really cool experience where the next Spider-Man comes out. And, uh, of course, they'll, they'll have Spider-Man 2 made by, of course, you know, the great Insomniac Games via... So the first party, but maybe they have a little, you know, side thing. Like maybe they have something in Dreams that you know is somehow promoting Spider-Man um, as well, or Venom, or or Morbius as well. You know, this cross promotion I think could be really cool for the future of Dreams, um, as well as I see a bright future with them letting it onto PC, as well as you know maybe potentially packaging in with PS5 or 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 soon enough. Uh, maybe a year after release, giving PS Plus subscribers Dreams, because I'm sure that will inevitably happen. Like, definitely, you can put your money on uh, Dreams eventually being a free PS Plus game for the future in in the PS5 era of PlayStation. So, 
I guess I'll call it an episode right there, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the on the future of dreams. Do you have any ideas on where dreams could go? Any thoughts? Any comments? Literally anything. Let me know down below in the comments below. And make sure also while you are down there to check out our description where you can find our different links to our Discord as well as our Twitter and as well as our anchor link to listen to our uh, you know podcast like this Road to. Uh, dreams as well as other road to series and of course the save slot podcast on podcast formats that being of course apple podcast google play podcast spotify etc like the video if you enjoyed that as well as hit subscribe to playstation source to keep up with lace and grace in playstation down below as well in the description are all the links that i referenced in this episode make sure to go check out those um very interesting reads as, very very interesting reads as well as check out that uh interview with yoshida at Tokyo Game Show 2019, where he uh, talks very highly, uh, you know, about dreams and stuff like that. So, I guess that's all I got for uh, for you guys. Hope you all enjoyed, and uh, I'll catch you guys next week in our content. I think I may be streaming tonight, some Uncharted 2, or maybe tomorrow, someone not Uncharted 2. I meant like Uncharted, the second episode of the first uh, Uncharted via the via the Nathan Drake collection. We uh, did. Uh, about an hour and some change yesterday, and we might pick up tonight or tomorrow, just depending on how I feel. But I feel like I definitely wanna, I definitely wanna stream some games more. So definitely uh, look out for that. And uh, thank you all for listening to me on this on this uh, solo podcast. Also, did you enjoy the solo podcast? You know. Also, make sure to let me know. I, damn, I have a lot of demands for you people. I'm sorry, but um, if you know a dreams creator, drop me a DM, tweet me him or her, or leave them in the comments. I will reach out to them and see if I can get them on the show. And uh, thank you for watching, and as always, or listening, thank you for watching, and as always, greatness awaits.